back and re-salt it, pretty much get it cleared off. So this one doesn't have really any ice to it? No, no. This is a, what we, I would call a better one if we were dealing with it. We don't have near, we don't have to use near the salt sand that we've been having to do on some others. Right now, material is very scarce to get, and yeah. if you're neat, if you're out there right now, I called, and they're six to eight weeks out on material. So you want to save all the material you can right now. And how are you? How's the city on its supply? I know we're pretty lo we're pretty low this year. Actually, we've done really well, but we've had a lot of snow and ice this year to tend with, and we've went through a lot of material. So we're hoping we can stay pretty low on material this you know use the material this go around and hopefully maybe just have one or two more storms and not have to worry about it for the year so i'm planning on ordering in the spring about 400 tons of material to catch us back up and be ready to go again for the next year i noticed whenever like just yesterday i was uh, looking for some more ice melt i had some but it didn't have a whole lot and i mean everybody's out yeah, it's. I checked Walmart and down to Lake Menards and Super yeah. Center at the lake. And they're all, they're all out. It's scarce right now. Everybody's bought it up. It, it's a rare. Well, it's, and it's not just here. It's like everywhere. Oh. Modot's running low. They're running over budget. So it's it's affected everybody this year. I went, you know, I just tell everybody if they can, please stay home. It makes our jobs that much easier and keeps everybody safer. We're that, not we're not trying to dodge them and fight the storm at the same time. Well, I imagine that they pack that the vehicles pack the pack yeah. the pavement down and yeah, the makes harder it, they pack that snow, the harder it is to get it broke loose. So it makes it harder on everything, the trucks, you know, and it makes it more dangerous for people to be out in it. So we're widening out the streets now. We're trying to widen them up. To get them get them all the way opened up and hopefully we don't get too much more snow. I think it's supposed to be done pretty much, what, middle of the day, early yeah. afternoon, something like that. I'm hoping it's... I was surprised how much, I mean, because looking out the backyard, and our, our deck was like hardly maybe about an inch on it, yeah. inch and a half. And I looked out in the yard and it didn't look too bad. I'm thinking, okay, so we're going to have to shovel the over the drive and man they're up next to the garage in the house it must six eight inch drifts probably yeah it's drifted quite a bit it's and the wind's blowing it around so it's hard to really tell exactly how much snow we got yeah i guess probably three inches i'm just you know just i would not move wrong but i would say at least three three maybe four because just judging from what was on most of the driveway where, where yeah. it hadn't drifted it was a good probably three inches oh yeah We've actually plowed this once already this morning. It just snowed so hard and covered it back up. Yeah. It was really fine stuff too though. Yeah. It's, it's, it's powdery snow. So it takes longer to build up, but yeah. it's it coming down fast enough. Yeah. Now you said you had a you said you have a couple of a couple of trucks that are down right now, yeah. I have one the spreader's broken and the other one's got a power street pump going out of it. Oh, man. They're at the shop right now trying to get them going. And do they have all the parts they need to fix all that? Most of, most of the time. We can try to keep extra parts on hand if we can. Especially for the spreaders and the plows. The power steering pump, we of course don't have an extra one of those, but we think we can get one. tighten up the belt and all and get it by till at least Monday till we can get a new one. Now, if in an emergency, do you have a place where you can, that will, is there like a parts place that will open up and get you? Yeah, O'Reilly's well, is really good about opening up for us in the middle of the night if, we're, if we need them. The manager usually, we call him and he'll come in and help us out. Provided they have the part. Yeah, and Miller's, Miller Auto's the same way. They both, Gary Miller, I mean, we call either one of them anytime and they'll come in and help us. Really deep snow when you're we're pushing the wind real really bad. Mailboxes are a problem along with the parked cars because you push everything in and you block to the mailboxes and then you block the cars in and people tend to get a little upset. But it's not you know we don't do it on purpose. So it's only it's only, it's only places for the snow to go. Yeah, we have to go somewhere with it. We have to get it off the street. So 
so just be advised everybody that parks on the street you know please try not to be mad at us we, we're not doing it on purpose we're just trying to open up the streets and make everybody safe as possible well and then downtown the downtown you uh you uh we tr still truck it out to by the uh, railroad tracks railroad tracks yeah we try to we tr so far we've been lucky this year we hadn't had to haul any snow we've actually got to move it back and forth back and forth okay. and pouring the salt to it and melted it where we didn't have to haul it but there's occasions when it gets so deep we have to haul the snow off and that involves you know more trucks and more people more manpower more. yeah more manpower and usually it's the city we all work together and we all run together i mean i'll use multiple apartments it's just not the street department out it's the water wastewater everybody's out police force you know they're out with us too fire department they jump on a city uh, bobcat and they're out doing the parking lots library all their parking lots you know so they're out there helping us too so it's a group effort everybody's out there doing it so typically uh, you know when, when you hit the forecast of a, a snow event or a winter storm event uh, obviously you monitor the weather and tracking it and all that but uh, how do you decide like when to go out and uh, you know, what how to start the treatment I mean obviously it depends on the different well it depends kind of snow yeah. it is but what how do you what's the process as far as deciding how to handle that well as I said every snow is different but what we usually do is I have dispatch which you know contacts me in the night but we use the officers they're out you know 24 7 so they're out driving around monitoring the town anyway so they help monitor the streets and they give me a heads up on how the streets are you know covering the, That's good. how they're icing up and that gives me a better idea of what we need to do right off the bat and plus the time I get in I know you know how I got a good report from the officers on how bad the streets are so I know where to start with how much straight salt or mix or how many people I need in advance before I even get started, which really helps. And once we get started, you know, like a snow event like this, we started early this morning and we just stayed on top of it. Try to keep the main the main flow through the emergency routes open as well. And then as soon as the snow quit, now we're unwinding everything up and hitting all the secondary streets. I know the, the snow routes, you know, they're, of course, they're posted through town and all that. Uh, those are basically designed what, to, to create at least a thoroughfare for yes. people to look. If they can't get to their house, at least they can get from their house to the next two blocks over or whatever. And Correct. And it, it, it's a for emergency vehicles, you know, gives them access to every end of the town they need. Does that work pretty good as far as the way they're yes, laid it out? Yes, it does. The uh, only thing I just dearly want to remind people that we have to make sure we do not park on the emergency snow routes because it makes it very difficult if we can't go down through there and get our trucks through there, especially if there's one only one pass. And here's a, here's an example too. You're yeah. dealing with traffic, but yep. that, that, you know it comes along with it. But as I said, it's. It's best if they can stay home, but if they need to get out, just be careful and please, please pay close attention because the guys out plowing are trying to watch the road, trying to watch, make sure they don't hit nothing, and and you know it's hard enough to keep your eyes on everything, and then trying to keep you know an eye on people that's out in it and driving around, and sometimes they're not paying as close attention as they should be, and it makes it really dangerous for everybody. Now, have you, uh, I, I'm probably maybe a silly question because I'm sure you have, but as far as plowing a path for like emergency vehicles and stuff, like uh, ambulances and, and police and stuff, are you called to do that quite a bit or? Sometimes, it depends on the storm, you know, and how fast, you know, it's been snowing or if we're behind or we've had, you know, mechanical issues or anything like that. Sometimes you don't need it, or they need it down in an area that don't normally get plowed a lot. We've had to go in ahead of them and help them out, but not so much this year. I mean, it's been, you know, so far so good. So, how many miles of streets are there in Delta? Um, I'm pretty sure it's 35 miles. 35 miles. Wow. <coughs> 
and like you said, a whole lot of dead ends and cul-de-sacs. Yes, sir. How do you manipulate like a cul-de-sac? You just like shut it off. I mean, you got to turn. Yeah, you got to push. You just turn it, push it to each side, and then kind of push it to the middle down at the end of the cul-de-sac. I bet you. So you don't actually like drive around the cul-de-sac. You just no. We we'll usually just drive straight in if we can. Then you got little roads like this. Yeah, it's real narrow and, and curvy. Curvy, so and you got to be careful because you can find the curb real quick. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the downside of curb and gutter and yeah. some subdivisions. Yeah, it, it'll let you know it. Does it tear up the blade or? Well, yeah, it's just hard on the plow when you, you know, especially when you hit something that solid. Right. Right. Like right, right here, you can see, for instance. This is an emergency snow route, and it makes it really difficult when you got cars parked on both sides. You can't. Really, it makes it hard to get, you know, the road clear. Now we'll be trying to widen this. Obviously, we won't be able to widen it due to the fact that because of these cars are in the way. Well, and I know we had a discussion before. It's like part of the issue is. A lot more vehicles. Families have a lot more vehicles. They have two or three, four vehicles now. Right. Single car driveways and all that. It's just there's only so. I mean, it. Not justifying it. I'm just saying it's just the reality of. Right. In some cases, there's no place for the cars to go. And that's, right. Yeah. Years, you know, years ago, family had one car. Maybe no cars. Well, yeah. just like here, you know. We got multiple cars here. Right. You know. Driveways full and driveways full have multiple cars, and then you just can't. It's hard to open up the street with all the cars in the way. I think you guys do an amazing job. I mean, you guys for for all you have to deal with. And thankfully, this looks like this snow event's about wrapping up. Yeah, what I understand. So downtown looks great, you guys. Like you said, you can tell. So you guys have hit it several times. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of difference when there's not a lot of cars in the way too. You can see how easy you know it yeah. cleans up. Business business districts when they're when they're when it happens on a weekend or at night when there's probably very few cars down here. Right, it makes the residential area. Yeah, it makes it very easy. It's probably just like the opposite. If it hits during the day when the residential areas are have fewer cars, right? But then you've got the uh, businesses, businesses are all full. Are busy. <laughs> so yeah, there's no good time. No, there's never a good time for a snowstorm. Well, there is not having one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see where it probably gives you a different perspective of snow when you're a kid. And it's like, oh, snow, yeah, great. You know, let's go play in the snow, and then yeah, when you're dealing with. What you deal with, <laughs> it's not quite so fun. Yeah, we call it playing in it, but it's not it's not so fun. Yeah. Especially when you have equipment breakdowns and whatnot. But. Oh, yeah. But all in all, I mean, as long as you have, you know, equipment you can hold up and get it cleared and then everybody stays safe, it's, you know, it just makes for a long day. 